Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, what a day we had yesterday. The entire crypto market went up about 10%. Um, and yeah, what a what a crazy day. But it all kind of happened on this news of Ethereum and the ETFs. So we are going to get into more of that. Turns out it was it is more news than just ch chatter and rumors about these ETFs. So we're going to get into all of that and more. Uh, but guys, if you haven't already, please go over to Olive Branch Sanctuary. Give them a like on Facebook or Instagram. Go over and donate to help out these animals. Um, you know, these, these are needy animals, guys, that are being taken care of, that have been abused and have abandoned. So as always, guys, I have this link. This is their link tree. You can go over there. You can donate to their uh, medical debt fundraiser. You can send them something off Amazon or Chewy Wishlist. You can hit their PayPal or their Venmo right down here at the bottom. Go over and give them a couple dollars, guys. These guys are very small. So anything you can possibly donate to them is very much appreciated on their end. Guys, This uh, I have no real affiliation with them. Again, these guys are just, every month I choose a different animal sanctuary to kind of spotlight and try and help out. So this is not me asking for your money. Just go over and help these animals out. This is a good cause. It'll buy you some karma and it'll it'll be good. You know, it's it's also a tax write off. So go over and help them out. Now, let's get into the news. So this is a uh, headline today. Analysts SEC could begin approval process for bit or for spot Ethereum ETFs tomorrow. So what we see is uh, the SEC has requested revised form 19 b fours from issuers to be submitted Tuesday morning. So they told people yesterday, they told all of their filers yesterday or applicants for these ETFs that they needed to revise these 19 b fours and have their revised version in by 10 a.m. today. So this is more than just chatter. This is actually the SEC making moves to approve these ETFs. Now it says uh, this indicates likely approval as soon as Wednesday. Now, I'm not completely sure about that. Um, if Gary is still Gary <laughs> Gensler, he is probably likely to drag his feet as hard and as long as possible. If you remember back to the Bitcoin ETFs, it came in last minute and very begrudgingly on Gary's part. You know, he he came out with a letter just complaining about the entire thing and that he didn't approve of Bitcoin, but he had to approve. He was forced by the courts to approve this ETF. So if you ask me, they'll probably drag their feet until Friday, probably closing time on Friday. Unless the one the one reason they may approve these early is because if you remember the last time for the Bitcoin ETFs, the SEC's Twitter was hacked and we had somebody release news fake news, uh, or early news, as it turns out, that the Bitcoin ETFs were approved. Now, this was a big scandal for the, uh, the SEC. It turns out that they didn't have their securities, uh, their security protocols up to par. They didn't have two-step um, two authentication set up on their Twitter which is just reckless for a government agency, to be honest. Uh, but there, this was a big scandal, guys. So maybe they approved these early, um, maybe hoping to avoid something like that. But I don't know. 
honestly. They've probably done what they need to to increase their security. But there was supposed to be a investigation into what happened back then, and I don't think it ever came came to fruition. I don't know, uh, you know, nobody was punished for for their lack of security or anything. So who knows? They could it could go either way, I guess. But I just don't see Gary being happy about this by any means. Um, now. Speaking of which, there are a lot of naysayers about this Ethereum ETF. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's not going to be as successful as the Bitcoin ETFs. It's going to, you know, uh, it's not going to come out and be what it what people expect. Now, I'm going to jump over here to coin market cap, guys. The, the thing is, is these Ethereum ETFs do not have to be as big as Bitcoin's ETFs. If you look at the market cap for Bitcoin versus, oh, here we have market cap. Market cap for Bitcoin is $1.4 trillion, whereas Ethereum is only 453 billion. So it's not even a third of the size of Bitcoin. So literally, these ETFs could do one third of what Bitcoin ETFs did and still have a bigger impact on the price of Ethereum. So now, no, they're not going to bring it under, uh, in as many assets under management for these firms, BlackRock and Fidelity and VanEck, uh, ARC21. All of these applicants for these Ethereum ETFs, they can't be expecting to bring in as many assets under management. I think it would be crazy to think that. So no, it won't be as successful in that way, for sure. But as far as the price goes, I think it very much has room to be very successful for Ethereum. Now, speaking of naysayers, um, Let's go over to the number one naysayer around, and that is our good old friend, Peter Schiff. Um, let me get this in focus. So our, our good old friend, Peter, came out this morning and made this tweet. He said, Bitcoin gained renewed strength from rumors that e uh, Ethereum ETF will likely be approved. But any money to buy new Ethereum ETFs will most likely come from existing Bitcoin ETFs. Investors who decide to make an allocation to crypto won't increase that allocation to buy Ether. And guys, this really shows how much Peter Schiff knows. <laughs> Um, basically what he's saying here is the entire market cap of crypto is the entire market cap, cap, cap of crypto and nothing is going to increase that. Nobody's going to come in. No extra money is ever going to come into crypto's market cap. It is what it is. It's never going to get bigger. <laughs> and that's just not the case. We see swings in the crypto market cap all the time. There's always new money coming into crypto. And Peter Schiff just kind of lets his intelligence show right here, you know, saying otherwise. But also, he, he really doesn't, I don't think he apparently gets what Ethereum is. Because guys, Ethereum is so different from Bitcoin. They are not the same. They're both cryptocurrencies, yes, but they are completely different in what they do. If you remember back to my first like two or three videos, I went over exactly that and where uh, Bitcoin is kind of a store of value and a very hard money, the most hard money we've ever seen. That's what Bitcoin is. Now, Ethereum, on the other hand, includes all of DeFi, decentralized finance. It goes through smart contracts and loans and NFTs and ownership and real world assets being tokenized and 
there is just like if you I couldn't even go over everything that DeFi covers in my entire video on DeFi, but go back and watch that video and you'll quickly learn that Ethereum is so much different than Bitcoin. So saying that nobody's going to buy Ethereum because they've already bought Bitcoin is pretty short sighted. Uh, you know, it's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what to say the, to that. It's kind of like saying if if Peter wants to get go that way, it's like saying that nobody's going to buy silver because they've already bought gold. You know, it's just a false comparison. The the two are used for completely different purposes. So I don't know. Good old Peter, guys. But the next thing I want to get into is this issue of uh, you know, the Democrats lately, we've kind of seen cryptocurrency become very partisan, which it shouldn't be. Cryptocurrency is for the people. And so it should be very much so a nonpartisan issue. But lately, we've we've seen that, um, you know, the Biden administration came out and said that they didn't care what Congress said they were going to veto this crypto bill that was just coming through. And we've seen Elizabeth Warren coming very hard with her anti-crypto army. And we've seen the SEC, which is a Democrat-run administration right now. Um, we've seen all of these things come together, and it's become kind of a partisan issue. until recently with that bill that just came through the House and the Senate that they passed, we saw a lot of support from Democrats in the House and the Senate. We saw Chuck Schumer in the Senate, who is the majority lead, guys. He's the probably the, the most powerful Democrat under Biden. Besides Biden, Chuck Schumer is probably it. And he came out in support of this crypto bill. So now you guys remember in my video yesterday, my first video yesterday, I, I said the one way that I thought maybe these ETFs would be approved is if Gary Gensler and the SEC saw that maybe they'd been, uh, you know, backstabbed by Elizabeth Warren and her crypto army, and there actually wasn't as much support for being against crypto as they thought with with all of these house of representatives and these senators coming out in support of crypto maybe maybe Gary would see that and flip and so maybe we've seen that now the question is is if Biden actually walks the walk on vetoing that bill and a lot of people are saying they think maybe he won't. You know, we have a lot of his own party coming out against him on that. So does he piss off everyone in the Democratic Party that are voting against, against him on this issue? I'm not so sure we do. And here's the thing is he has 10 days, uh, 10 days, to pass, uh, to veto or sign that bill. So I believe it was sent to him on the 18th. He should have until the 28th to either veto or sign that bill. If he does nothing, now this may be the out for him. If he does nothing and doesn't sign it, doesn't veto it, after that 28th uh, day, or the 10th day on the 28th, that bill automatically becomes law. So, like I said, that may be the out that Biden needs to save some face. Maybe he just goes, whoops, guys, I'm old. I forgot. And, uh, you know, is able to kind of save face, face on both sides. I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch anyways. We'll have to watch over the next week or so for what he does on that bill. I think if he does veto it, there's going to be a, a, an uproar from, from the House, from the Senate, from a lot of 
constituents everywhere. Um, I just, I'm not so sure he doesn't, uh, does veto that. So, um, the next thing I want to get into guys, I want to go over to this article, uh, from the block and it says BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETFs over 400 holders is mind boggling. So what we've seen is over the last few weeks, uh, we've had these 13 F filings, which is basically when big institutions or entities uh, have to file what they hold and make it public what they hold. They've filed those, uh, those forms and BlackRock alone has had 400 over 400 holders in their Bitcoin ETF. So this is mind boggling, to be honest. Um, but it got me thinking, guys, it it kind of made me think, well, I wonder what if, if there was actually more that held, because what a 13 F filing is, is it's kind of a snapshot of the very last day of the quarter. So people had to report everything that was on their books for that last day. So maybe there were some institutions. I just kind of got to thinking maybe there were some institutions that have previously in the past come out as very anti crypto until these ETFs. And they were like, oh, we can buy now. Let's get some. And so maybe they wanted to buy some, but they didn't want to file and let everybody know what would they have to do. You know, maybe if they came out hard against them, they didn't want to file and let their shareholders, you know, have to answer to their share shareholders on why they're hypocrites. They didn't want to have to face that backlash from the public on being very hypocritical. So what would they have to do? Well, all they'd have to do is they'd have to sell before that last day in March, and then they wouldn't have to report it. So I got to thinking <laughs> and I went back and I looked at this chart for all of the weeks in the Bitcoin ETF history, guys. And this is what it shows. So the last day of March would have landed in week 11 of the Bitcoin ETFs. And lo and behold, week 11 right here. It was our biggest outflow ever from the Bitcoin ETFs. Coincidence? I'm not so sure. You know, I think a lot more companies actually bought the ETFs and just didn't want to report it. So, and this guys, this week 11, this is those, this is the start of those last two months that we've seen that 20% dip. And now we're starting to come back up to it. So are these institutions back to buying? You know, obviously they had to stay out for a certain amount of time. Otherwise it's considered a wash trade. So I don't know, something to think about. If this is true, the, the next question is, is if we see that for next quarter, which would come in, I believe on week 24 would be that reporting date. So I guess we'll have to kind of watch and see what the ETFs do on week 24. But as of now, it's buying season. So I hope you guys are all allocated. I hope you guys all took advantage of that, that the last two months of just sideways downward action. Um, I know it's, it's kind of irritating for me because I, I made these videos to help people out. And it's specifically to help the people, my friends, my family. And I, I know for a fact that some of the people that are close to me sold at the very bottom. They bought into the hype of the ETF and they sold down at 
57 or 58,000. And now we're back, guys. And it's sometimes, you know, despite me on this channel screaming, you know, stick, stick to your plan, stick to your plan, stick to your plan. If your dollar cost averaging in, keep buying. This dip is a blessing for you. This is a gift. Buy. And I wasn't just trying to hype my own bags, guys. This happens in Bitcoin all the time. And I kept telling you guys, don't get shaken out. But some people have to learn that lesson on their own. So, uh, you know, I, I have definitely learned that lesson myself. So I get it. I definitely get it. It's just human psychology. You know, everybody and their dog knows that you're supposed to buy low and sell high. But once those emotions start kicking in, once you're watching the prices and uh, human psychology ju just does what human psychology always does. And they panic sell and they they end up flipping. They, they buy high and they sell low. It's crazy. It's madness. Uh, but. Congratulations, guys, if you've if you've held through that entire dip, that is I mean, typically I know like I know those dip dips are typical. But if you're just getting into cryptocurrency and you saw that dip through, congratulations. You know, you've you've made your first big dip in cryptocurrency and you will be rewarded for it. So anyways, guys, that's about the video for today. I am working on that video on how much Bitcoin you need to retire. So watch for that. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell notification so you don't miss those uh, videos in the future. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.